So just, you know, anything else? Uh, when I first came to this area, uh, wanting to help out the wildlife and stuff, you know, I pretty much still do. I volunteer for all the wildlife centers, okay? If there's anyone that has a problem, if it's a center that I know about, I will help them. If I don't, I learn, and then I'll still help them. It hasn't stopped me at all. Um, what I, I, what, one of the things that bothers me about wildlife rehabilitation is in the last 10 or more years, it's become more of a contact sport. It's more competition than it is anything else. It, it just seems like, you know, any area, if I can give any area in the United States or anywhere else in the world a little bit of advice right now is we're all there for the same reasons. We're all there trying to make that difference. You know, we're, we're all using, you know, resources to, to make it to these animals, resources to treat these animals, resources to feed them and keep them and eventually set them free. Um, the bad news is I just find, you know, lately that these, these, these wildlife rehab centers have been against each other. It's, it's like having, you know, a bunch of, well, it's like the married housewives of wildlife rehab center. You know, who's going to dog who behind the scenes? Who's going to, you know, start shit for somebody else? Oh, beep. Um, you know, who's going to do those type of things, you know, to, to, to make their lives more miserable? With a little bit more cooperation and a lot more friendship, you know, you know, it not being a competition sport, you know, your phone call to somebody and, you know, in Ocean Springs, hey, you know, there's a pelican over there that needs your help. I'm in Gulfport right now. I can't make it. Do you have somebody that already could? And that person picks up the phone and goes, hey, you, you know, rehabber number 453, can you go to this corner and, and pick up this creature that's now sitting there and, and needs help? It would make life so much easier, okay? You know, right now, it, it, it even to the point where, you know, they would, you know, they, they they're only want to go to one vet versus another. You know, and sometimes that can be deleterious to the animal's health if there's a, a place where a guy might be better off with birds or another person might be better off with reptiles or this person's really, really good at mammals. You know, but right now it just seems like it's contact sport. Every time I turn around, I'm having to put out some fire somewhere that somebody has started over some creature. You know, and that we had that, that friendship to begin with, that we had that camaraderie, you know, that all for the same team, I don't think I would be putting out as many fires. We can save a lot more animals that way. So there's a lot of competition. These people aren't doctors. These are just compassionate. These are just, you know, uh, good Samaritans and compassionate people that, that you know, uh, in, in the wildlife industry, we have what they call your bird people, there's your squirrel people, there's your possum people. Oh, the possum people, they're just really funny. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 when you, you look at these individual things, you know, and, and this is like amongst a rehab facility, you know, give one a name. And, you know, and they each have their own little specialist because who wants a house full of all different animals if you can just have a whole wall full of squirrels, you know, or a whole room full of, you know, raccoons, you know, so they each kind of specialize, you know, amongst those individuals. But I mean, still, they're, they're, they're all over the coast in this whole tri-state area. If they just work together more, they would probably waste a lot less resource. I mean, gas alone. You know, I can't tell you how many times I hear, you know, some clients bringing me an animal and it's like, well, I was going to let these people bring it, but they weren't going to bring it to you, so I brought it to you myself. You know, so here's two wildlife facilities, you know, racing to pick up an animal somewhere wild and the client's like, you guys are crazy. I'm taking it to the doctor myself. You know, so I get that several times, you know, several times a month. And it just seems like every time I hear that, it just kind of breaks your heart, you know. Well, what kind of... I mean, don't they have to have like special licenses and stuff to keep animals or transport animals or whatever? Yes, it's a it's a federal permit that you know you get from you know through Washington. Um, it does allow you to hold on to animals. I mean, wildlife rehab in itself has got is is pretty well regulated, or it's got quite a bit of rules. They're not like people run around regulating it on the you know to uphold the laws and. And I, to date, my 16 years, I have yet seen a federal officer break down a door because somebody had a, a possum or something slightly illegal, you know. But at the same time, you know, it, it the, the rules are out there, the fines are out there, it's just not upheld. But those people that do the wildlife rehabs, one person amongst that system will actually have, you know, their, their rehab certificate. And they get to name certain sub-people beneath them that allows them to go out in their, in their steed. So, you know, it, it, the, the, the licenses, the permits, it's all, you know, it's all there and they use them. You know, it's just that while they're racing to go to, you know, to, to, to Animal A, you know, they could have split their efforts up and gotten A and B taken care of and C as far as that goes instead of racing to fix one. Um, oh, yeah, wait, let me 